everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Temi and I'm a graduate software developer working in the UK and I make YouTube videos about tech, early careers and adulting. This is my first video in my Breaking Into Tech series where I'll be talking about getting into tech in the early stages of your career. So in this video, I'll be giving some advice and sharing some knowledge based on my own personal journey about how to get a job in the tech industry without any prior experience. But before I get into the video, don't forget to subscribe if you're new here and give this video a like if you find my tips useful. Before you even jump into applying, it would be a really good idea to have a think about what part of the industry you're interested in. This may sound a bit obvious, but if you already have an idea of the industry you'd like to go into, then it just makes it easier to know what kind of jobs that you should be applying for. But if you don't know what you want to specialize in yet, then this is completely understandable. And there are actually quite a lot of more generalized jobs in tech, especially for graduates and young people. So once you've decided what kind of job you want to apply for within the tech industry, identify the skills you have already and compare these to the job requirements. This will help you identify any skill gaps. But do keep in mind that you don't have to have all the skills that are listed on a job advertisement. I would say that as long as you hit quite a few of them, then go for it anyway. And you usually have transferable skills anyway, such as communication, problem solving, teamwork, research, that you may have picked up from any kind of retail or customer service job, or even any group projects that you would have done at university. And if you're still at university, try to utilize your career services center. I think that students tend to overlook their university career services. And to a certain extent, I do understand I was the same way at some point, but they can actually be helpful if you know the right questions to ask and you know what to look out for. Most career services at university will help with mock interviews and assessment centers, psychometric tests, trips to companies within your local area, and some might even plan industry talks if your department doesn't do that already. Some university career centers even have degree or subject specific advisors that can help you tailor your CV and cover letters to your preferred industry. So I would advise that before you even go to your university career center, that you have a think about what you'd like to get out of it and what questions you'd like to ask. Another thing that uni students and young people tend to overlook when applying for jobs is LinkedIn. I think that especially if you're in your first or even second year of uni, you might not be too interested in your career yet, but I definitely think LinkedIn is something that shouldn't be overlooked. I don't think I actually set up a LinkedIn account until my master's year of university. I think that I would have gotten a lot more out of it if I'd set up a profile earlier. You can use LinkedIn to get in touch with recruiters who will actually make your job search a lot easier for you. There's a private feature you can enable, which lets the recruiters know that you're looking for work. You can also apply for jobs easily on LinkedIn through their jobs tab. And sometimes companies will advertise jobs that they have on there that they may not advertise on their company website. So make sure to keep an eye on that tab. LinkedIn is also a really good way to find and connect with alumni from your university or school that may have worked at a company that you want to also work for. You can also find people that currently are used to work at that company. And once you've identified these people that work at the company that you would like to work for, it's always a really good idea to introduce yourself, your educational background or whatever experience it is you might have and let them know why you'd be interested in applying to that company. Nine times out of 10 people will respond and may even help you out by giving you a referral or directly handing in your CV to HR. This is quite helpful because generally you have a higher chance of getting a job at a company if you already know someone that works there that may be able to refer you or give you some advice. If you'd like me to make a separate in-depth video about creating a good LinkedIn profile for a graduate, then do let me know by subscribing, liking, and letting me know in the comments. I think when starting out with the job search, graduates and also young people forget about some really good entry-level jobs and tend to focus more on the more flashy roles, such as graduate schemes at really big companies. 
but there are some really good entry-level roles which will provide a great stepping stone into the career of your choice in the tech industry. Some of these entry-level roles are IT consultants, tech consultants, security analysts, and also trainee software engineer or developer roles. These job roles are a really good way to get your foot in the door and gain valuable and relevant industry experience and they're also a really good way to build your network within the tech industry. Within these roles, you're also more likely to be fast-tracked into the career of your choice as you would have built up a good rapport and network with your colleagues at your workplace. And I know in this video, I've been focusing quite a bit on graduates and uni students, but if you didn't go to uni and you don't have a degree, that's still fine because there are a lot of ways you can still break into the tech industry. If you're interested in software engineering or even data science, there are quite a few coding and data science boot camps. Although there's the idea that boot camps cost thousands and thousands of pounds, a lot more of them are actually free now or may even offer scholarships. So it's really just up to you to research what's out there and find out which one is the best fit for you. Another thing that I believe people tend to overlook, especially those without degrees, are apprenticeships. There's actually no upper age limit to apprenticeships as they're relevant to anyone with the genuine need for at least a year's training and to anyone who can demonstrate competence in line with an apprenticeship standard. And I believe the criteria to actually apply for an apprenticeship is that you don't already hold qualifications that are equivalent to the apprenticeship level. In other words, I think that if you do have a university degree, then you're not able to apply to apprenticeships. So the good thing about apprenticeships is that you get training on and off the job through online learning, shadowing, or industry visits. So again, it's a really good way to break into tech, especially if you don't have a university degree and you maybe don't have the option to go to a coding bootcamp for whatever the reason. So grad schemes are another great way to break into the tech industry without any relevant experience because a lot of grad schemes will actually employ you whatever your degree subject. Some companies may still have a preference towards students who studied STEM subjects. So just make sure to do your research and find out which ones do and which ones don't. I won't be going into any more detail about grad schemes because I actually already have a whole other separate video on grad schemes. So if you haven't seen that, make sure to check that out. I'll put a link to it either up here or up here somewhere. And in that I talk about assessment centers, psychometric tests, applications, red flags to look out for when applying to grad schemes. So I have a whole other video on that, so make sure to check that out. So these were some of my tips for getting a job in the tech industry as a university graduate or a young person who is early on in their careers journey. If you found these helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. A lot of these tips were fairly general, so they can be applied to any industry, but some of the more specific ones like LinkedIn, networking and entry-level jobs are things I wish I'd known earlier. If you have any questions about this video or any suggestions for the kind of videos you'd like to see in this series, then please do let me know in the comments down below or feel free to DM me on Twitter or send me a message on Instagram. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in my next video.